What's going on guys, Slavey here and welcome back to another Albion Online video. Today I will show you the melee DPS builds the fleet uses on the Roads of Avalon. You might have seen some of the Roads of Avalon PvP highlights I posted on my channel and you might also have wondered what our builds look like. I certainly got a ton of questions about our builds so in a series of 3 videos I will show you all the builds we use and explain everything about them. We have a total of 11 builds and between these, the 3 melee builds I will cover today feature the Carving Sword, Realm Breaker and Blood Leather. When we create a 7 man group for the Roads of Avalon, these are the builds we choose from. We did a lot of testing and trying out as a guild and found these builds make for the most optimal gameplay experience for this content. We've had enormous success with these builds in both the PvE and PvP the Roads of Avalon have to offer and hopefully it will do the same for you. Our first melee DPS is the Carving Sword and this is one you always want to have in your party. Aside from bringing damage to the team, the Carving Sword also makes for a ton of utility. You have a debuff that weakens your enemies, a purge and cleanse combo that can be used offensive but also defensive and you even have access to crowd control. Your role in PvP is to weaken and damage the enemy backline as much as possible. At the same time you also have to keep an eye out for possible clumps to maximize the effectiveness of the abilities you have. Starting with the weapon itself, we are looking at the Carving Sword which has Fearless Strike as the special ability. This is a dash that will reduce the resistances of all your enemies that get hit by it. The strength of this debuff depends on how many heroic charge stacks you have, in which the more you have, the stronger your debuff will be. Therefore you want to take Heroic Cleave on your primary to dish out AoE damage and build up stacks. Since Heroic Charge stacks play a major role on the swords, you also want to be on the third passive to manage your stacks even better. As for the secondary ability however, this will change based on the meta. As of making this video, we are using Splitting Slash, which makes for a fair bit of AoE damage and crowd control. But for a long while, we were using Iron Will for the various utility it provides, such as immunity to purges. The Helmet of Feather adds more utility to this build in which the Purifying Smoke provides you an AoE purge that you can use on your enemies to remove their buffs and limit the damage they do. You want toughness for increased defense as your passive. The Helion Jacket makes for huge sustain through the Lifesteal Aura that makes it possible for you to stay in the enemy backline. You want Balance Mind as the passive on your jacket for various stat increases. Then you have the Hunter Shoes on which you take Rush for a big boost in mobility to ensure you get your special ability off in time wherever it's needed. Just like the jacket, you want to take the Balance Mind passive on this one. During extended fights, you will have energy issues on this weapon because of your low cooldowns. Therefore, you want to take the Limb Herscape on the Carving Sword. You take Beefs 2 for extra damage and resistance potions to stay in the enemy backline for even longer. With this loadout, we use a tier 8 bag and the Spectral Bat. Our second melee DPS is the Realm Breaker, which makes for a ton of damage and puts an enormous amount of pressure on the enemy team. You have both burst damage and damage over time with this build, and as a bonus, you also have a very nasty debuff. This build is all about doing damage and sustaining yourself in different areas. Your role in PvP is to get your bleeds onto as many enemies as possible to create immense pressure for the enemy healer. You want to keep the pressure going in the enemy backline and burst them down whenever you get the chance to do so. We're looking at the Realm Breaker on this one which has Aftershock as the special ability. After you jump you do a good chunk of damage to all enemies hit and also knock them up for a short duration. The most value within this ability however is in the debuff which reduces the max and current health of all enemies hit by 20% for 5 seconds. Since this weapon has slow auto attacks you want to take Life Leech as the passive for instant value. Deep Cuts is also viable in case you want more damage instead of sustain. For your primary you take Rending Spin and for your secondary you take Raging Plates. You want to take the Skuller Cowl with this weapon because the axes are very energy hungry and it's no different for the Realm Breaker. Aside from being your energy source, it will also increase your defenses and help you stay in the enemy backline for even longer. You want to take the Aggression Passive on the Helmet for increased damage. Just like the Carving Sword, you also take the Helion Jacket on the Realm Breaker, which makes for huge sustain through the Lifesteal Aura. 
This will make it possible for you to stay in the enemy backline as long as possible. You want the balance mind passive on your jacket to increase various stats. To add to the already high burst damage this weapon has, you take the royal sandals to expand on that even further. The fanciless rush will increase your damage whilst also providing a movement speed buff and just like the call, you want to take the aggression passive for even more damage. Since we have our energy source covered through our helmet and we want to stay in the fight as much as possible, you want to take the Martlock cape with this build for increased defenses. Beef stew is our choice of food of course for increased damage and once again resistance potions to help you stay in the enemy backline for as long as possible. Once again with a tier 8 bag and the spectral pet. And then our third and final melee DPS which makes for a ton of pressure by just being there and of course I'm talking about the blood ladder. Now I made a video on why this is the best weapon in the game and it shouldn't come as a surprise that it also plays a very dangerous role on the roads of Avalon. This weapon is an opportunity seeker that will punish any targets for their mistakes or when they get too low. This build is all about damage whilst also making for a fair bit of sustain to ensure you can keep the damage going. Your role in PvP is to put a ton of pressure on the enemy backline and execute any targets that go below 40% health. Because of your abilities, you will be able to stay in the enemy backline for rather long periods, but you can't just stay there forever as your defenses are rather limited. The Blood Ladder has the Lunging Stabs special ability that has insane execution potential and also makes for a big reset. You want to take Deadly Swipe for your primary, which adds mobility and damage to this build, and Chain Slash for your secondary, which pretty much does the same as Deadly Swipe whilst also granting you immunity. As for the passive on the Blood Ladder, you want to take Deep Cuts for some additional single target damage. Since the Blood Ladder is a one-handed weapon, you can take an offhand with it. You want to be on the face breaker for this content, which increases a ton of your offensive and defensive stats. To increase your execution potential, you take the Stalker Hood with Balanced Mind as the passive. Just like the other two melee DPS builds, you also take the Helion Jacket on the Blood Ladder, which makes for a huge sustain through the Lifesteal Aura. Especially as the Blood Ladder, you want to stay in the enemy backline for as long as possible and make for a ton of pressure. Therefore, it's important you use this ability wisely. Once again, with the balanced mind as the passive on the jacket. Then you have the hunter shoes on which both refreshing sprint and rush are fireball with our default being a refreshing sprint. Rush can be really great for when you want to play around securing kills. And just like your helmet and armor, you want to take the balanced mind passive on your shoes as well. You take the Martlock cape with this build for extra defenses, which you will need when you sit in the enemy backline. We take the Beast 2 on the Blood Ladder for increased damage and of course resistance potions to help you stay in the enemy backline for as long as possible. And again with a tier 8 bag and the Spectral Bat. Do know that it will take some time and practice for you and your group to get used to these builds. So give yourself and your team that time. And if you want to improve, the most important thing will be recording and learning from your gameplay. Ideally, everyone in your team records their gameplay and you guys watch it together when you have the opportunity. As always, remember to have fun and I'll see you next time.